25. The following shows murders by type of weapon for murder cases in 2009. Uh, handgun, rifle, shotgun, unknown firearm, knives, fists, other. Verify that it's a probability model. Probability model means all of those are between 0 and 1, which they are, and they have to all add up to 1. So we have to go through and check and see, do they all actually add up to 1? And they, in fact, do add up to 1. So um, the sum is 1. Okay, does that make sense? So each individual one between 0 and 1, and they add up to 1. Okay, check. B. What's well, probably that a randomly selected murder resulted from a rifle or shotgun? So that's the probability of a rifle plus, oops, let's make this smaller. I'm going to do that. Oh boy. <laughs> now my writing is going to be small, so I'm going to start over here. Probability of a rifle or a shotgun. That's the probability of a rifle plus the probability of a shotgun minus the probability of both. Now, can we do both a rifle and a shotgun? Well, the answer is no. I mean, I suppose you could if you had one in each arm, but we're counting these as two separate categories here, so that would be no. Okay. So this is going to be a rifle is 0 0.026 plus a shotgun is 0 0.031 so that'd be 750 so 5.7% C what's probably the random selected murder results from a handgun, rifle, or shotgun handgun, rifle, or shotgun well, we're just going to add those up handgun, rifle, or or shotgun, 0 0.473026, so it's going to be 5.7 plus this, 0 0.057, I'm doing my math here, 8 plus 5 is 13, so 53%, D. What's well, probably that it resulted from a weapon other than a gun? Um, let's see, here's an unknown firearm, so other than a gun would be all of those guys. Would be 0.134. All of those, whatever those are, so I'll add those up. 0.134, I get 0.329. Are murders with a shotgun unusual? Yeah, 3.1%, I would call that unusual. It's low. Okay, all right, 27. What is 27? Oh boy, sorry I didn't get that down either. What does 27, the problem say? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. 27 is right here. Sorry about that. If E and F are disjoint, and F and G are disjoint, must E and G be disjoint? Give an example to illustrate your opinion. Well, let's draw a picture, first of all. So if E and F are disjoint, E and F are disjoint, and F and G are just. I mean, F doesn't have anything in common with G. So F doesn't have anything in common with G. So G could be over here, right? So F and G are disjoint. But could it be this? It sure could, because F and G are still disjoint, but E and G are not disjoint. 
right? Because that's what they're asking, are E and G disjoint? And the answer is not necessarily. Okay, so what's a specific example they're asking? Can we think of an example to illustrate our opinion or this idea? Because we can see what it is, but let's see. All right, how about if we do this? Let's call it E, draw a red card, F, draw a black card. This is drawing from a deck of cards. Okay, so E and F are clearly disjoint. Okay, now F and G. So, Oh, maybe I didn't do such a good job picking this out. Oh, okay. F and G, a black card and a hearts. Or heart. Heart or red cards. So E and F are disjoint. And a black card and hearts, drawing a heart, are disjoint. Because the hearts are red. Can't do both of those. But E and G are definitely have overlap, right? In fact, G is entirely within E. So there's definitely E and G are not disjoint. Okay, there we go on 27. Makes you think about, these ones are good because they do make you think a lot about it and really try to understand what's going on. All right, 29, multiple births, following data represents number of live multiple delivery births, three or more babies, yikes. In 2007 for women 15 to 54, Determine the probability, okay. So we've got all this information. 15 and 19 multiple births, there were 100, da, 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 and so forth. Determine the probability of uh, random selected multiple births for women, okay. 15 to 54 involved a mother 30 to 39. Probability that you're 30, oops, to 39. That's a three. Well, that'd be 1545 out of 6427B. Okay, determine the probability multiple births from 15 to 54 involved in a mother who was not 30 to 39. Well, let's look at this. Probably that you are 30 to 39 is 1545 divided by 6427. 24%. The probability that you're not 30 to 39 is 1 minus 24% or 76%. Okay. That's a whole lot easier than adding up all the other possible, com all of these and all of these, right? C. That's what I want you to recognize for compliments. What's the probability that the mother was less than 45. So all of these. Well, you can add all of those up, or you can find the complement. Because isn't it this number right here? Let me erase this stuff here. Isn't it the complement of that? So it's 1 minus, think about it, 105 out of. 6427. In other words, the probability that you're over 25 is 105 divided by 6427 is 1.6%. So it's 1 minus 1.6% or 98.4%. Right? If this is 1.6%, then the rest of it has to add up to 100, or be 98.4, which is 1 minus 1.6%. Complements are so nice to work out like this, for problems like this. D. Determine the probability involved in a mother who was at least 20. At least 20, that means you're 20 or older. So here's your choice, after what we just talked about. 
you can add up all these and divide by that or you can just do one minus a hundred over sixty four twenty seven now see if that makes sense to you I'm going to figure out this probability here one hundred divided by sixty four twenty seven that's one point Oh, it's 1.55, 1 1.6% also. Okay, and then that allows me to figure out what this percent is. Okay, it's 1 minus that. So it's the complement of greater than 20 is 15 to 19, which is 1.6. 1 minus 1.6%, which is again 98.4%. Okay, does that make sense? All right.